Now, beaked whales can dive to depths of nearly 3,000 metres and stay underwater for well over two hours. In fact, many marine mammals spend little time at the water surface. So how do they hold their breath for so long? So you might think it's because they've got really big lungs, but they don't. In fact, humans have even larger lungs in relation to our body size. And although they don't have remarkably large lungs, they use them better than we do. They collapse and reinflate their lungs. Now, land mammals don't do this. In fact, if our lungs collapse, we'd be off to hospital to inflate them. But because they collapse their lungs, they expel most of the air. The amount of air you move in and out is called the tidal volume. So with every breath, they get rid of most of that unwanted carbon dioxide. And they replenish their lungs with fresh oxygen rich air. So it's not about the size of the lungs. They're more efficient at moving air in and out. They have a larger tidal volume. And their lungs have more cartilage, making them elastic relative to ours. So after collapse, they spring back. And this means they reinflate quickly, creating a low pressure which draws in fresh oxygen rich air. So this happens really quickly. Now when underwater, their blowhole is closed tightly. And as they break the water's surface, the blowhole opens and air is expelled under great force as their lungs collapse. And you see this as an explosive breath as mist in the air, that blow. But blow's not seawater. It's a mix of warm air from the lungs and mucus and bacteria from the respiratory system. As the whale's still warm breath hits that cool outside air, the temperature change triggers the moisture in the whale's breath to condense into water droplets, just like the mist when you exhale on a cold day. Except you can see a whale's breath for kilometres. As whales and dolphins move air under enormous pressure, they exhale two to three times faster than us. But have you ever noticed they're breathing from the top of their head? Their blowhole is equivalent to our nostrils and they exit about here on this beak whale, here on this dolphin. So having nostrils at the back of your head makes it easy to grab a quick breath of air as you break the water's surface. But the earliest whales, like pachyocetes, they had their nostrils at the tip of their snout, like other mammals. So to breathe, they needed to hold their snout out of the water. In later whale species, the nostrils appear further back on the head. In the duridon, the nostrils are here midway the back of the head. But today in modern whales and dolphins, the blow is further back still. But while still an embryo, you can see that their blowhole is much further forwards. And as the embryo develops, the blowhole moves to its final position high on the head. So although the blowhole is probably the most obvious adaptation to diving in cetaceans, there are other tricks as well. They store more oxygen in their bodies. Now our red blood cells store and transport oxygen. They do this by binding oxygen to a red protein called haemoglobin. In fact, haemoglobin in our blood gives it that red colour. But whales have more than double the amount of haemoglobin we do so much more that their blood is dark red, almost black. And whales have more blood than us, giving them a much greater oxygen storage capacity. Think about it as their oxygen bank. But they don't only store oxygen in their blood, they store it in their muscles as well. Now we do that too. Oxygen binds to a protein in muscle that's similar to haemoglobin. It's called myoglobin. But whales have muscles packed with myoglobin. 30% much more than land mammals like us. And like haemoglobin, myoglobin is a red protein. And because whales have muscles so rich with myoglobin, their muscles almost black. So these features mean that whales and dolphins have an enormous store of oxygen. But they're also extremely careful about how they use that oxygen. They slow their heart rate and provide blood and so oxygen only to organs essential when diving so their heart, lungs, brain, and some of their muscles. By constricting muscles in the walls of blood vessels, they can selectively stop sending blood to areas that are not needed, like the digestive and reproductive system. So through time, there were many evolutionary transformations that allowed whales and dolphins, air-breathing mammals, to live a largely submerged lifestyle.